Are you ready out there? Yes. We'll call the meeting to order of the Copley Trust. We have Dick Sargent with us. Gloria couldn't be with us tonight, but it's all right. We hope she gets better quickly from her fall. So I've got to uh, discuss requests for funds for Copley Country Club. <clears throat> Has everybody read everything on the application? Yes. Yes. Have you looked at it, Dick? I've looked at it, yes. Yeah. It looks like the total request is for 21,794.20 for a bunch of grades. Yeah. From uh, heat pump, water heater, electrical work, um, Jim Bradley for a concrete floor, 49 cubic feet freezer, swinging safety door, beverage cooler, cryolator. So, do we have any uh, comments about this? Do you have any comments, Dick? Yeah, we've done other upgrades of village and town property. Their library. And this is uh, as good as any of our municipal properties. I mean, yeah. Treasure, actually. How many villages are built around the Gulf? Right. Except in Florida. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. That's a good point. <clears throat> I just had a question on the equipment. If those are installed prices or not, anybody know? Or is it just for equipment? Not my application. Right. No, I was, I was here representing. The, is there anyone here uh, to speak on that? Hi, <clears throat> this is Karen Otterino. I'm chair of the board of Copley Country Club. Great. Welcome. I Hi, um, I didn't hear the question. What was the question? I was just wondering if the uh, the prices quoted for the uh, dishwasher, freezer, and all that stuff, if those were installed prices or if it was just for the equipment and you got to install it on top of that. That is just for the equipment. Uh, I don't know that there's an installation price. I think, uh, I don't know. Hmm. Um, There's no yeah, line no, for labor. <clears throat> yeah, I I don't think that the installation for the dishwasher and the fryolator is a really big ticket item as far as uh, you know. It's not a, a a big number. Right. So that's something you guys would do yourselves. Sure, yes. So you're you're prepared to cover that cost, whatever it is? Yes, we are. Okay. Karen, this is Eric Dodge. How are you? Good. How are you, Eric? Fine, thank you. Just a question. When Efficiency Vermont gets involved in any projects, they typically come with some funding. Uh, are there rebates or any fundings uh, being made available to the country clubs through Efficiency Vermont? The quotes that we got from Bournes for the um, mini split heat pump and the on demand hot water heater included the Efficiency Vermont rebates for those appliances. Do you know what the dollar value or the dollar amount was for that? Um, I believe for the heat pump it was $800. Um, I don't have the quote in front of me. Um, I think it was $800 for the heat pump and I'm not sure for the on-demand hot water system. Probably similar because they're similar dollar amounts for total. Yes. Yes, exactly. So the question I would raise then is are we commingling? They, they, um, the rebates go to the installer so that's already factored into the quote right. that was given to us okay did i answer the question no. we don't want us to get it. right 
that a person and they're getting hot water or something like that. Exactly. I think you had Dick walking over your shoulder. He's mentioned that a few times. Yeah. Well, I had good people walking over my shoulder. <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions or comments about this? No. No. Do I hear a motion on the floor regarding it? I'll move that. It's a dollar figure. Yep, yeah, twenty-one thousand seven ninety-four twenty. That was your motion. Yes. Yeah. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Is that aye. You, Judy? And you, Brian. Aye. The rest of the board is here. Any opposed? Motion is passed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, next on Copley Trust is approved, approving the minutes, the minutes of 11 16 20. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. I have a motion and a second. <clears throat> Any further discussion? I just had one correction. Um, uh, in the section where we had the select board concerns, um, I had talked about LCPC and it's supposed to be county taxes and not country taxes. What's that? That's not the same agenda. We're we're doing the minutes of the Copley Trust right now, Judy. Not, not oh, okay. We got another line, but that's fine. That's fine. We'll we'll bring it up in a minute or two. Okay, there is there any further discussion on Copley Trust minutes? All in favor say aye. 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 Judy? Aye. Brian? Any opposed? The minutes are passed. So do we have any other business to Copley Trust? Do you know anything, Dick? No. no. Okay. Hello. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. My name is uh, Imelda Turner, and Judy Bickford asked that I join this meeting, and I wasn't sure if I was on the agenda or not. Imelda, welcome. How are you? Hi. I'm doing wonderful. I'm, I'm, I'm a board member with the North Central Vermont Recovery Center. Yes. Are you, are, um, you, I, um, mm -hmm. are you on to talk about Copley Trust or not? Regular, regular, no. meeting. regular meeting? Yes, she's on for the regular um, meeting. Okay. Thank we're, you. We're just wrapping up Copley Trust right now. We'll, we'll okay, get on perfect. there. Thank you. Uh, just hold on, Imelda. We'll get, we'll get to you. Thank you. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Brian? aye. Any opposed? We are now adjourned from Copley Trust meeting and I will start the regular select board meeting. First on that agenda, are there any changes or additions, Dan? No, there are not. Okay. Hearing none, we'll move into approving the minutes of the select board meeting, the minutes of December 7th, 2020. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? And Judy, now it's time for your. Just to, to change the word from country to county in the uh, section on select board concerns where I had talked about LCPC. Okay. Okay. That's noted. Yep. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Judy and Brian? Aye. Any opposed? The minutes are passed. Next, do we have any community concerns tonight? Is there anybody listening that has any community concerns? Melda, this is a good time for you to, to speak up. Okay, Imelda. Oh, okay. It, it, hi. So I'm 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 um, on on the board with the North Central Vermont Recovery Center, and um, I was speaking to Sarah Haskins, um, and she mentioned that the in in order to place the recovery center onto the town appropriation for 2021, that it that I needed to have uh, sig uh, signatures on a petition via e-signatures, and I'm I'm just 
wanting to learn more about that process. Okay, yes, that's really, I don't, Sarah, are you listening, Sarah? I'm here. Hi, Can you hear hi, me? Sarah. I hi. see your, hi, Sarah. I see your, like you're tuned in. Could you answer Amelda's question? Well, I can, but I can't. Um, in order for um, the select board has a policy, so it's really up to the select board. And Dan can also chime in. It's not up to me. Um, your policy currently states that for a new social service agency to get on the town meeting ballot, they have to submit a petition, and then the state requires the petition to have five percent of the voters. Um, and um, you voted at the last meeting to allow e-signatures for this one election because of COVID, because of the VLCT article. Um, I know nothing about collecting e-signatures, nor can I find any guidance. I know that personally I've signed DocuSign, something like that when I um, purchased my house, but um, I've never received anything in the office with an e-signature. Yeah, it sounds like we're gonna need some expertise in that area. I, I sign them all the time, but that doesn't mean I know how to set it up. Dan, do you have any comments on that? Um, no, we don't, because I know Sarah looked to see if Secretary of State had any guidance on it. Um, you know, I, I can understand how difficult it is to set that up. We, we can't even find anything um, that would be a model type of thing for somebody to use. So we don't have any type of uh, petition for people to use to go out and gather signature with. Um, I, I've heard that, you know, that Google Docs might be something that you could use to, to go out and do that with, but I, have, I don't have any knowledge of any, um, any forms out there that somebody could download and use. Imelda, this is Eric Todd. Hi, Eric. Hi, Imelda. Imelda, through Edward Jones, do you do electronic signatures over there through your office? We do, yes. So do you have the capability of gathering electronic signatures to put onto a, a, a form for us? I do not, no. Okay. No, the, the Edward Jones business is strictly for Edward Jones business. Yeah, so, I um, what, they what, use something external of the... No. No, everything is internal. So my, my, my request tonight for the uh, select board would be uh, requesting a waiver for the electronic signature because it seems like there's not a lot of information about it. Other towns are waiving signatures on petitions and we have a dire need for our services through the recovery center, especially during this COVID situation. And I'm kind of running out of time here for the January 15th deadline to submit this petition. Yeah, sounds like it. What do you guys think? My only concern is if we waive it for one, we waive it for all, and we get a mm -hmm. to a multitude of right. submission yeah. requests. That's why that, that policy is like that, Anola, just it weeds out the ones that would just be seeking a quick cash in and those that really want it uh, for their organization are going to take the time to do the signature piece. And we do understand the difficulty about the electronic signature. I'm just not sure uh, what the best way to go around this is. I it sounds like we maybe if we could do some re more research. I know there's there's a bunch of different platforms. There's yeah, Google Docs, there's uh, DocuSign, there's like half a dozen other ones. And it's just a matter of learning how to use that system. Right. Um, it's out there. Yeah, I mean, we have it at the work where I work. You know, it's just a matter of uh, talking to the right people to, to have it. And if we voted to make e signatures okay, then we should get the system set up so we can do it. Um, and I know right. time is of the essence for you, Imelda. And, and we by, by no means are, you know, belittling what uh, your organization does or, or um, you know, I know a request for funds, but. Like Eric said, we have to be really careful about what uh, we waive um, because we can have anybody asking us for money and get on that that list. And uh, we've been down that road before and, and not that you don't desperately need it. I, I think it's a great organization and I'm sure you do. And thank you for what you do. 
Um, but I think maybe if we could do something, is there any way we can do something? Hey, Bob. Yeah. This is Brian. Yes. Is there any way that maybe we could um, uh, have a one-time, what is the signature, 30 or 35? 200. 200. It's two, 206. Is there any way we could cut it down some to make it so that maybe they could uh, work it with that? No, that's state statue. It is. Right. The, well, the, the choice is, a petition with 5% of the voters and or the select board can put on whatever they want without anything. We've got, uh, not to interrupt you, Sarah, Gary has just Googled this uh, electronic signatures and there's a bunch of them that show you exactly how to do it and how to do it even some of them for free. Um, all different platforms, you know, and I think it's something we can do. Um, it doesn't look difficult at all. No, just uh, right. My my concern is just uh, people having access to technology um, right. to get this yeah. done within two weeks' time with 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 the holidays and then um, right. yeah okay. So yeah. It, it isn't it the select board's role to to kind of review each each request? I mean, your yeah. your your comment earlier had. Um, Stated that you know there 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 may be people asking for monies that uh, that really shouldn't be getting monies, but isn't it the role of the select board to review each request? Yes, we can. individually. We can't do that, and although if once somebody submits the petition with the correct amount of signatures, the board has no choice. We can't in the matter. It has to be put into the list for the town report. So we can't we okay. can't pick and choose. That's why the, the statute reads the way it does. We it takes away the ability of the board to pick and choose their favorites. Is but, that but, Sarah? but initially the the petition allows the um, the article I'm going to say article be voted on separately. It's not part of the appropriations list until it's voted on separately. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. It becomes its own line item or its own article within the town meeting. Right. I'm wondering if we could do something creative in that it's um, a one-time opportunity and then next year there in order these groups that come in under this the COVID uh, situation have to then get the 206 signatures before the 2022 town meeting. Yeah well certainly it would be a challenge at this point to have all the signatures in by January 15th I think that's Probably unrealistic to do, but I think we've got to go by that. By that, are you Gary? Any comments? I mean, like Sarah says, that statute you can't. There's not a whole lot you can do about it. Uh, right. But I don't think. I mean, if anybody's really serious about it, it looks to me like all you got to do is take your cell phone around and have people sign. Have people sign if you want. You know. Uh, well, I just know when I did it before, getting 200 signatures was a lot. And if you're saying that Amelda has to take her cell phone to everybody I, uh, to get it signed, that would be outrageous. Um, the other way, because you can give petitions to other people to get signatures too. I'm wondering, uh, when I looked online at uh, some of this, uh, um, the, the e-signatures, uh, e I thought it was in an email situation where you could send out an email and get the signatures that way on that form, but I don't know. I didn't research it closely. Yeah, you can do it. That. Yes, you can. Yeah. It, that's exactly yeah. what it would be doing. We don't want her going around person to person and getting signatures right. on her phone. It's about sending out an email blast to as many taxpayers uh, as she could that are on the checklist, right? such that she ends up with 206 electronic signatures. You'd get five from us, that's for sure, Imelda. <laughs> That's a good start, guys. <clears throat> okay, it, it it's going to be challenging with the limited time, but I appreciate your uh, review and the, the the recovery center is in our town, and that that that's the reason why I wanted to present it to you. Um, right. I'm sorry. So if there's any, 
Magical. Mm -hmm. okay. I got one so more. You, Just a question. Right, normally, right. normally at the, uh, if you were at an open town meeting, she could get up in front of the people. That's true. But being that that's going to be different this year, I don't know, is there any way that that could happen at that time or? Informational meeting. That? No, not not with Australian ballot. Everything right. has to be. It, it's very different with Australian ballot. Everything has to be on the warning. There's set deadlines by the state, and okay. everything is. It's either got to be on the warning or it's not, and it's got to be phrased as a yes or no question with a set amount. Okay. I feel um, like I'm being very negative. I'm I'm not trying to be. I'm just trying to explain. You're trying to follow the standards. laws. Right, right. And I um, appreciate everyone, you know, um, listening to 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 my uh, request. And I guess this COVID situation has just posed some additional challenges and our um, uh, consumers using the recovery center are also experiencing some additional challenges as well. So I guess we just need to work through it and I'll, I'll try my best to collect as many signatures as possible and I'll just uh, take it that, that route and if I make it, I make it and if not, I'll just have to go back to the drawing board in 2022. But I appreciate everyone's um, uh, attention to this. Thanks, Amelda. Sorry we couldn't do more. No problem. Thank you so much, everyone. Happy holidays. Right, you too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, Dan, okay. I want, Dan, I want to apologize because I should have given you a heads up about this, but it didn't occur to me till I was just sitting here about 10 minutes ago. We are no used to getting that. That's normal. There's always somebody that um, is out there, you know, and certainly with a very valid request, but it, it's all right, Judy. It's good to just bring it out or have, uh, have somebody bring it out whenever. Is there any other community? Yeah, I knew I couldn't I couldn't address this. I right. couldn't address this myself. That's why I wanted it to come before the full board. Exactly. All right, if there's no other community concerns, we'll move to new business. Uh, first is discuss and approve Christmas gift cards for EMS. Bill. Um, what we're uh, what we've done is we've got uh, uh, the rescue association side that's bought. 20, uh, 20, $25 gift cards for our members. Uh, we want to match that. I certainly have the funds, especially like in our educational training line item. Uh, we haven't been able to do live trainings. Uh, that money is, is there. We certainly have the funds uh, to cover an additional $525 from our side to do to pay that, uh, to match that. Yeah. Uh, as you know, as you know, and are well aware, uh, we've kind of been the tip of the spear here for the last eight months. Uh, and now we're on this this upswing uh, again. Uh, and I've got, uh, frankly, I've got some people struggling over there uh, uh, with uh, food insecurity and housing and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we wanted to uh, match what the association has from the EMS and the town side, uh, mm -hmm. and that way our people would get fifty dollars. Right. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, and uh, when when I discussed it with Dan, uh, it. Uh, because uh, it's uh, technically a gift, we, we've got to get approval from, from you to do that. Right. But you have the funds in your budget from training. Yes, sir. Is there any questions from the board about this? Absolutely not. You, Brian? Well, I had just one. Uh, I imagine if we do this, we probably ought to do it for the fire department, too. Do they have a, yeah, this is, well, the fire, the fire department doesn't have that, the gift card thing, do they? This, we've only done the rescue well, rescue in the past. The, the rescue is the only one that's brought it up in the past. And it was, it was, we get, the town goes up and gift cards pre-Thanksgiving holidays of all town employees, correct? Right. Well, it was, it was all employees, but not volunteers. It's all full-time and part-time employees. Uh, so this is the roster of your time at Bill to include your volunteers as well as including my, my full time staff uh, other than me, uh, my part time staff and my volunteer staff. 
what do you guys feel? That was the only concern I had is what about all the other departments? Uh, I understand that EMS is, as Bill said, tip of the spear for the last nine months here. And probably it's not going to go away anytime soon, even with vaccines, but um, yeah, I, I don't know. Fire and police the same, you know. You got fire and police or and highway, you know, frontline people, and, and highway is considered that to a certain extent. I just see EMS to be a really different uh, situation here. Uh, I, I don't know off the top of my head how many are are volunteering, but um, the call they they have to be staffed twenty four seven. So well, the does, fire is not. Sorry. So does the fire department right there? They're on call twenty four seven. Yeah, I don't know what you guys want to do with this. I, I am concerned. When I hear Bill saying that they've got some people that are circling the drain because of COVID with uh, housing and food. Well, it's hard on everybody, even those that are might not be sharing it there. Judy, I love your heart. I really do. I, I am. My concerns are with, with Gary's in that there, there's. I want to think there's something that we could do that would be more. I don't know. More uh, equal, but it's a tough one. I mean, I don't. I agree. I, I know I mean, that they're out there. We, I know. we do something for EMS. We do, yeah. And EMS week didn't happen this year, right? For for any of us, uh, for any agency. Uh, so uh, this is that's the thing. Normally right. we would do something uh, recognition wise during EMS week. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll defer to your very judgment. I want to make sure that I you understand that uh, the rescue squad's the greatest. I, I'm nothing against the rescue squad. I just know the fire department is too. That's all. Nothing against what's happening there, but I would just like to see us do it for a mom. If we could. Dan, what um, what's the story with the funds if we decide to do this for all the departments? Well, I'm sure you know we could find some place to take it. I you know I don't know if Tina has uh, any idea how much we would be talking about. Tina, any thoughts? Well, you probably a lot more fire volunteers than you do EMS. I mean, you probably right. got five uh, fire. I've got 21 people on my roster. I'm asking for $525. Yeah, I, I, I don't really know because I don't know off the top of my mind how many people Danny has. Uh, I have no idea. Right. Well, that's what my initial thought was, is we should reach out to the department head. Bill's here, but Denny's not here. and. Uh, you know, it'd be nice to talk to um, Kevin also. You know. Well, Kevin has 13 people. Right. And his department. Now, who's Kevin? For the highway, you mean? Yeah. yeah. I thought the highway got some already. No? All, all full time and part time paid staff, including EMS, highway, general. Police, everyone got a $40 gift card for, for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah, everybody got it, Brian, for Thanksgiving. Okay. Not volunteers. Not volunteers. So we could be uh, okay. volunteers. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yes. This is Paula, Dee. Um, When I do the volunteer payroll for the fire department, it's about 19 guys. Okay. That's good to know. And it's just FYI. I, I wouldn't mind saying we could do it for all the volunteers. It would be a separate separate thing. That's what I was thinking. Does anyone have any comments? I'm just trying to figure Gary, out. Gary's doing some ciphering. Uh, you're looking at... For everybody, uh, thousand bucks, uh, twelve fifty. Yeah, I mean that's for everybody. You yeah. got twenty one. You said Bill. Yes. Is that from the volunteers or twenty one? That was twenty one total staff. Yeah. I'm gonna 
got to deduct eight from that, eight from 21. I guess what I'm saying is if you did everybody in every apartment, the you know, highway's got 13. Oh, I didn't do. Uh, they do police. They're not volunteers. Yeah, they're not volunteers. Right. We're just talking, right. just doing volunteers, you know. Right. But I was just wondering how much right. for everybody. For everybody. To, how much money we're talking. So it's probably two grand for everybody. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know how many there is on the police department altogether. Well, there's, well, there's uh, 12, 13 on the police department. There's yeah. 13 on the highway department. So 13. How many can you say? Huh? There's a lot of them on the TV. You're talking sixteen hundred dollars, right? Roughly. There's like ten general government, ten or eleven. Yeah, that's it. In general government, another ten. So well, yeah, a couple thousand dollars. A couple thousand dollars to cover everybody, employees and volunteers and everybody. So. I'm certainly willing to listen to a motion if somebody wants to make one. <laughs> well, I'll start. I'll make the motion that we do what was asked: a twenty-five dollar gift certificate. For the volunteers. For all the volunteers. All the volunteers. Okay. Do I have a second? Hi, Brian. I'm this Derek. Uh, I'm hesitant on seconding the motion because I was going to make a motion that covered all employees, full time, part time, and volunteer. Did you hear Gary's Gary's figuring is uh around $2,000. around two thousand dollars for everybody. And I don't know if other departments like Bills have training money that they haven't spent. From police has. Police has got it. Yeah, because they didn't do training anything. Do you have any direction on what kind of gift card? You just asked me for $25 gift card. What I did have a question, so when we get to the discussion, I want to ask a question. I'll second Gary's motion. Okay, so it's up for discussion now. So uh, what I was curious about is for the rescue squad, um, we have part-time employees and we have full-time employees. Aren't most of the people that work for the EMS department, aren't they employed elsewhere? Or and and they work they try to work around their private schedule to accommodate us. Okay. Yes. Yeah, sure. Same with fire department, same thing. Same, same thing, thing. yeah. Okay, I just wanted to get that clear in my mind. Thank you. We have, we have totally volunteer staffing on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday nights, and we have a split crew volunteer paid person on Friday, Saturday nights. Yeah. So yes. Thank you. So I'd like to bring up just one thing. Uh, I understand you're you're given a gift card for 
Is it for money? Twenty five dollars? Yeah. To be used in local businesses. Trish is gonna help with that. So um are you gonna be in other words, are you making it to one business or are you making it why I'm worried about I'm worried about somebody that needs food. Lots of businesses. Let's spread the wealth here. You're talking a lot of cards here. I personally think we should go around to some of our restaurants and do twenty here, twenty there, and I'd be more than happy to work with the town on doing running around and getting them and working this out. I think this this is, should be mandated that this money is spent in our community. In the town of Morristown, it's coming from the taxpayers, but we're also really, really need to support our businesses right now. I don't businesses disagree. are scared. Yeah. I don't disagree with you at all. I just we have so many people that commute in, some from very long distances. For them to have a gift card to a local restaurant in Morristown, their family lives in Newport Center, it doesn't make sense. So that's why well, I, I, I hear what you're saying. I don't disagree. I'm just saying if, if we're going to have a gift card because people are struggling. To me, they need to be have the, the leeway to, to buy groceries at a grocery store that they need for their households, not purchase a meal from a local restaurant that they can't get home until it's cold anymore. Okay. Uh, Maybe but, I can work with them so we can talk about the different staff members. Well, there's Hannah for the two. Hannah for the two. You know, we can right. talk about where they live and yeah. maybe this would be better or maybe, you know, if right. they live in town, then you get a, a restaurant. Right. I thought we have to coordinate with all the department heads to see who wants what where. Right. Yeah. We I mean, talk about this. there's Obies in Newport. There's right. Hannaford's and Price Choppers everywhere. There's, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, there's yeah. plenty of options. Yeah. Thank you for working with yeah. us. Do I hear any more discussion around this? So clearly, the motion is not card specific. It is a twenty-five dollar value card to be determined through Trish working with department heads. With Trish's help. You hear that, Brian and Judy? That sounds good. That's good. Thank all, you. all in favor say aye. 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 Any proposed? Judy and Brian? Aye. Motion is passed. Uh, aye. Should we be saying our name when we say aye? Yes. Well, it's kind of, there's three of us here and two of us not. So I'm just going to say Brian and Judy. You can chime in. I can tell. Okay. I didn't, I didn't real, realize my voice was as deep as Brian. <laughs> I can't tell you apart. <laughs> We're able to do it for everyone. All right. Number two on a new business. Errors and omissions. Newland and Scatchard. Sure, I can just address it. This is all um, both current use. Um, so these are changes that came down to us from the state. Yeah. Make a motion we approve them. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. second. I have a second by Eric Beach of Judy. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Brian and aye. Judy. Aye. aye. Damn you, Sorry. Eric. Judy, it's not a competition. Any opposed? <laughs> the motion is passed. The challenge can I, can I just, <laughs> Go ahead, Dan. Can I just make sure that the three board members I have there tonight sign that and leave that with Erica? Uh, we yeah. have to have that signed and filed by uh, December yeah. 31st. Okay, right thank now. you. Thanks, Dan. All right, next, number three, discuss Raoul property current use waiver. Dan, Dan, do you want to talk about this? Do you want me to? Um, I think it's probably easy, Bob. You've got a little bit more of the background. I also had Todd dig up some stuff that's in an email that's in the packets. Um, yeah. So that you all can take a look at it. Um, Gary might even know some of this as it went through the DRB process too. So yeah, I, I got a call um, from Sharon Rowell about this, mm -hmm. and um, she's been working with Ron Stancliffe from uh, the Conservation Commission, and um, they're donating a piece of a parcel of property. It's, I think it's. it's called lot five or it's the fifth lot. Um, they have four lots that, that um, they have taken out of land use and they have to pay the penalty for taking the property out of land use. And the fifth one they're donating to the town. And Sharon was hoping that she could get a letter of support from us um, because it's gonna be used for you know community recreation or whatever. 
and um, so maybe she wouldn't have to pay the, the penalty for taking that that lot out because it, it's sort of in the hole there. You know, it's where they cleared the brush on that where the guardrail is, and um, they're going to set up. Sharon said they're going to set up a parking area. I don't know where they're going to put the parking space there, but um, I did reach out to Ron. I didn't get a chance. Uh, to hear back from him, but um, it'd be nice to uh, it'd be nice to support them. I, I I don't see why we shouldn't. Do you have any questions of that, Gary? No, uh, uh, it was part of the DRB approval for their subdivision oh. permit, and uh, you know Todd's just doing his due diligence and trying to uh, you know get them to do. There's I think four or five different. Uh, conditions that they haven't met so far to, mm -hmm. to satisfy the, the uh, subdivision permit. Bill and Sharon, you mean? Right. So, uh, no, I would I would think that uh, the town would be more than willing to work with them on that because it's going to become town property. Right. And uh, the Conservation Commission was supposed to taking care of this before well, July 4th, 2019. Right, and she hasn't heard back. That's why she yeah. reached out to me. Right. But, um, was it the Conservation Commission that was in the responsibility to mark the boundaries? Yes. Yeah, Ron, she said they, they didn't. They mark. agreed to that originally. Yeah. They, they have been blades. Ron yeah. marked them. But she, she wanted to put it before us and um, get our take on it. If we, we could support them by a letter of... Uh, Letter of support because uh, it's going to be town property. I don't have a problem with it. I just wonder what you guys all feel. Where is that located on Washington Highway? If you just go past the armory heading toward Elmore, it's right on that sharp corner where there's a guardrail where actually I had uh, some, had Kevin trim some brush there. It's down in that little hole there. It's a parcel that's relatively not usable for. You know, development of any kind, but it's going to be like for nature walks and that sort of thing. Um, they are going to put a parking area for one or two cars. I, they haven't worked that out yet, but that's yeah, basically good to hold the rest of the world together. So yeah. Or, uh, but there's an area beyond that. Yeah. It's part of Lot Five that for uh, two parking area, two car right. parking oh, yeah. parking area there. Do you know where I'm, where I'm referring to, Judy? I, I have an idea. Yeah. Thanks. Brian? Yes. You hear it. You've heard it, really. So, do we want to? Can we get a uh, a motion for this? So, uh, Todd's concern here is that he wanted to tie in the approval for our support letter to this work being done, but it's not Sharon and Bill to do the work with our own conservation commission. Right. I really, I don't want to hamstring Bill and Sharon. Right. They're dealing with. Uh, so I, I, I don't disagree with Todd, but I don't want. Right. I, don't, I don't want to use leverage of holding up Bill and Sharon for something. That right. Well, yeah. Actually, been done by now. So. Sharon came to me personally and asked if we would do a support letter, and I said yeah. I didn't even know about this other stuff. Yeah. You know, but I think it doesn't matter. You know, if we if we support it, it's still going to be. Well, the one thing that they they the Todd speaks about in there that they that could be done prior to the slower approval is the property deed to the town. Right. Right. That that's not a conservation piece. That is the, the Rowells giving that to the town. Yeah. And like she said, she said that Ron just did mark it. Okay. So he surveyed it or whatever. So that's the next thing we had to identify and then do it. Maybe we could just, for now, just say, yeah, as soon as it's conveyed to the town, we'll give it a letter of support or something like that. Yeah, I don't know which comes first, the chicken or the egg there. I right. don't know whether, you might have to check with the land use people to see if they can take it out of land use or not take it out of land use before it's needed. Right. I don't know that either. You know, it depends. But I don't want to hold them up either. Because it's pretty generous to do, for them to give it give it to us. Well, it's worth this price. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <Well, laughs> and, and I'm not demeaning Bill and Sharon for that. It's, no, just, it's, it's a not usable lot, and it's it's nice that we're going to have use for recreation purposes. But um, 
it, it, they would be paying taxes on what people have it relatively mm -hmm. well, worthless to them. But yeah. Uh, Bob, can I just interject? I, I think the, the letter helps either way. Um, it's going to have to come out of current use one way or the other. Um, I, I think if we can help them get it out of current use before they transfer to the town, that could potentially save the town from taking it out of current use later. So I, I think the letter is still going to be the state's decision how to do it or what to do it. Really, I think what they're doing is just trying to lessen the fees of that being taken out of current use. Right. So um, I, I don't think there's any liability to the select board to go ahead and write a letter to support uh, the waiver of the fees. And I believe that's really what she's asking for. Yeah. And that's what I thought too. Is, you know, she's just trying to not have to pay a fine on that lot, you know, and it doesn't hurt us to do it regardless of what Todd's planning, right? So I think we should that we uh, submit a letter supporting the Rowells bringing that plan out of Current use. Second. And a second. And it be signed off by the chair. And I can yeah. sign it. Any further second. discussion? You are first that time, Judy. All in favor say aye. 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 Any Judy? Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed. All right, old business. Do we have any old business? Seeing any? We'll do budget review. First, uh, Pleasant View Cemetery. Who wants to talk about that? Is that you, Brian? You want to talk about that? Your liaison? That would be Joy Marshall. Oh, is Joy there? I see initial. Down the bottom left. Yep. Tina, is this in our book? It's way in the back, Judy, under miscellaneous. Yeah. Joy, are you there? Joy, are you are you there tonight? I see your initials signed in, but you're muted now. Can you hear me? Yeah, hi, Joy. I can't. I, I my camera isn't working. I guess, but if you can hear me, that's all right, isn't it? That's all right. Okay. So you know, put your Sunday best on for the meeting that way. <laughs> um, I guess we've, we've presented a letter requesting an increase yes. of $4,000, an annual increase, taking us up to $20,000. You have our budget. Does anyone have any questions? Just looking through it right now. Okay. Uh, I'm on page one of the budget worksheet yes you have the budget in front of you too joy i do okay any questions from the board right on the revenue side of things why are the, the lot sales so up and down i guess they they budget three thousand but they've only received nine hundred Joy, how, how does that go? I mean, you can't predict how many people are going to die by lot there, I guess. No, that's no, it's not that's always a guessing game. Yeah, so $3,000 too much to be putting in there as a proposal for a revenue side of the house? Well, if we don't sell 3000 then we end up taking more out of the endowment. That's basically how it works. Okay. Okay. Page one. Page. Looks pretty level, level. 
we're actually a thousand dollars less than we budgeted last year we've yeah. consistently gone down the last three years is there anything you see on the horizon that um, is going to be expensive no other than things you can't count on of course well we have the trees pretty much under control yep um that was our big one i have budgeted some for trees because there'll always be some maintenance right mike's doing a great job with the equipment we aren't having to replace it as often as we had been so that's helped a lot yeah he keeps it nice doesn't he i've been up there a few times yeah he does a really good job he and brian do an excellent job we feel really fortunate to have them yeah that's great Is there any questions on page two? Or is there any other questions for Joy from the board members? I was wondering where is the four thousand dollars increase? Must be here. I'm not look I'm not seeing it right away. That letter. It's it's spread out. Um, yeah. wages went up. We want to keep our help. <laughs> um, equipment went up. And that's, let me see, something else. That's it, wages and equipment. Yeah. But it's, it's still $1,000 less than last year. Okay, thank you. Right. Yep. Our endowment isn't exactly making a lot of interest right now, as I'm sure you're all aware. Right. Well, it looks all right to me. Does there, anybody have any questions for Joy? Thanks, Joy. I have, I have a question, if I might. Oh, absolutely. Go ahead. So we're delighted to come and see you every year, but I'm wondering if it's necessary. Only if there's big changes, but it's sometimes it's really nice to have you reach out and okay. let us know things like that, you know, the $4,000 increase and you okay. know, even if it's a decrease, it's nice to know exactly why, you know. <laughs> We're doing our best. Yeah, I'm sure you are. We appreciate everything you do. All right, I guess we can move on. Thanks, thanks Joy. Thank you. We'll move on to the library. The next page. Is there somebody on there for the library? Good evening. This is Steph Hoffman. I'm the treasurer. Can you all see and hear me? Yeah. How are you? Good. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. We also have Julie Pickett, um, who's the board chair, and Giselle Guyette, the director of the library, on the call in case there were any questions that. I couldn't field either they were too in the weeds for what the library's needs are or um, anything sort of larger Julie could probably take. But um, you have the budget in front of you there. We have actually asked for um, funding from the town at a, a lower rate than in years past, understanding the current economic situation. And we too have an endowment and we are working with our financial folks advising us. Um, our proposal this year actually is almost a 50% increase on the strain on the endowment. And so we're cognizant of the, the town's limitations and have really tried to work um, to come up with some solutions in that area. So if there are questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, that's good to hear. Um, we'll just go down through this page one of the worksheet. Does any of the board members have uh, any questions on it? I don't see anything that jumps out. How about page two. Can you guys hear me? Yes, who is this? Uh, it's Paula, Paula Didi. Um, I'm not sure, hi. Um, I think there were some changes after you guys received the budget worksheet. I'm not entirely sure. 
but I believe so. So if you're looking at the second page under insurance, there was uh, $3,400 that was added, but it was also added as an increase under their revenue, under their investment. I just wanted to let you guys know that. So if you're scanning down on yours and you see a blank, it's really, we, we did make that adjustment, but it was after you guys re received your copies. Yeah, I was also looking at the accounting and bookkeeping. You know, the 19 and 20 is like 2775 and um and then 2021 is 200. What what was that for? Sorry, Dan, for, like, I, I had some trouble there breaking up. Just looking at the line item of accounting and bookkeeping that 19 and 20 figure of 27.75 and both sides of that are, are two hundred dollars just wonder what that was for um, i believe that's a fee for the um rappers in order to do their 990 form that's oh. fairly substantial right and i believe that's what part of that plus flying checks and stuff that's not a fee like we don't charge to do it right well i'm just thinking that's that's a lot of checks that's a big price well, tag no, for checks the 990 form. okay so okay. why 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 would they budget two hundred dollars if it's a twenty seven hundred dollar line item? Right. I don't know. That's why I'm wondering why it's I don't know the budget. When you see spikes like that, you kinda of wonder. Did you hear the question, Steph? You're you're under administration and you're looking at the um accounting and bookkeeping? Yeah, just that. We've actually done a reallocate. Yes, yeah, so we've actually done a reallocation. This this line item is now reflected appropriately in the description for fees, checks, and materials. That's the nine hundred dollars um, category, and the dues uh, or sorry, and the um, professional services section is an accounting and bookkeeping has been moved to that section of the budget. So we are accounting for what we need for our taxes, and there was an audit. There was an audit that bumped that amount up that is not a regular occurrence that we don't need to account for. So that accounting amount now includes our tax preparation and the checks and fees and other small incidentals in accounting, but we will not need to account for that that large audit fee. Okay. Thank you. That Bob, if I, Bob, if I may as well, um, and, and agreeing with Stephanie, there was some retirement audit that happened that incurred some additional costs that would in the future not be there. Okay, thank you. And then, and then the next one down, uh, the board expenses, memberships, meetings, that was uh, 1391. Is it not so high because you couldn't have meetings because of COVID? Yes, we were just looking at kind of where we thought we were headed this year when we started assessing that category. And we just think for the near term um, in general, that will probably stay down. But we did check the budget for places where we saw limited spending up until the point where we were drafting this budget and tried to accommodate that. Okay, thank you. Does anyone else see anything on page two? Go to page three. Looks pretty flat. Anything on page three? We go to page four. So I do have a question either for you, Steph, or you, Julie. Um, I try to ask this of all our departments, is um, is there anything you can see long-term that you're gonna need, any big ticket items, or what's on the horizon for the library? Um, I think the biggest, can you hear me okay? Yeah, you're muffled just a little bit, but. Okay, okay. well, um, let's see. Let me hear you better now. Okay, the biggest um, expense would seem to be the building maintenance. 
we've had some major HVAC issues this year, and um, also the, uh, we had a uh, propane leak, and those were things that we didn't expect. So that is why the um, proposed budget for repairs and maintenance is we jumped it up four thousand just sort of as a contingency. Okay. All right. Any questions from the board? No, I'd just like to say I'm sorry to, to know that Giselle's leaving us. Yeah. Yep. She's here somewhere. Thank you. Um, I just, I, I, I've written you a note, but just thank you, all of you, for all of your kindness and support and your goodwill over the past six years. I um, miss all of you. Um, Norristown, Norris Villa is a great community, and you, you're all part of it. Um, I miss working with you. Thank you. Everyone will miss you too, Giselle. Thank you. Thank you for joining us tonight. Do you have any questions for us? No, nope. no. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Yep. Great. Thanks a lot. Okay. Take care. Thank Happy you. holidays, everyone. You do. All right, Mac. Where's Mac located? Right in the general government budget. No, I really appreciate what Mac is doing to beautify our community and keep us kind of up to date on and uh, what's happening. Thanks. Agreed. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next, recreation. Where is that? Well, there's, back. there's two spots for recreation. The recreation summer camp is in the back under the and then there's a recreation when you go through the regular general budget. There's some recreation wide items there too. Okay. So I don't probably want to talk about the one in the back. Where is that? Under miscellaneous, it's the summer camp program. Oh, okay. Is there anybody here to speak on that? No. Uh, I'm here. I don't know if Steph um, from the library, she's on our rec board too. I don't know if she's still here. Um, I can't speak to the summer portion, um, but for the general parks and rec, I'm here. Basically, we just um, level funded and asked for the same as last year. I think Dan could speak well. Okay. The summer program, of course, we didn't have last year. Right. So we're just kind of level funding it where it's at right now, just because we know there's going to be have some changes and some challenges even going forward in the next summer. So I don't think we changed a whole lot in there. Tina, can you confirm that for me? Okay. Well, the entire thing is exactly as it was last year. Yeah, that's why it was only 12435 because we canceled it, right? And then, Correct, uh, we never even got it started. We just didn't have the resources to have it. Right, yep. All right, is there any questions on that from the board? And that income that you were just mentioning, Bob, I'm pretty sure was actually 1819 okay. um, that came in late. Okay. That's good to know. I'll put that down. We didn't we didn't get any money at all last summer. Anything that we had been paid, we refunded back to families. Okay. Well, that makes sense. 
Aren't we going to be in the process of trying to find a new full-time director for the summer program? Mm -hmm. You're going to advertise for that? That's uh, the plan. And I'm wondering if it's somewhere along the line the town will be thinking about increasing um, the full-time director to include to be a year-round position. Trish says no. Oh, you say no. Well, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Somebody is hiding behind a mask saying no. Dan, Dan, speak Dan you're smiling. <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't know what it's going to cost. You know, we, I haven't really seen anything for what a job description would be for that, for a full-time year-round position. Right. You know, um, what, what's, uh, the, the summer program is, 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 is definitely somebody that needs it during the summer, but I'm not sure what we would do. Um, recreation, you know, for a full-time position year-round. I'm just thinking it's something we should be thinking about, like, it down the road in the future. So we're getting to that point where um, we're, we're in need of someone to um, oversee and do a more, little more recreation planning for our community. I don't mean for it for, for next year, but I'm thinking in the next five years. Right, but to see see what happens. I mean, there's stuff that goes on through the school as well. We just want to care we don't overlap and we're looking at that. Just the ski program is still in full swing. I'm not sure who manages that. If right. that's done through the school or if that's a separate program, I, I don't know. But so I, I think when I think recreation, I think about the winter, still in that full time position in the winter time. Yeah, summertime for sure. But yeah, that's worth looking into. Yes. Is there any other comments about recreation? Just to answer, Eric, the ski program is volunteer. It's not through the school. There's very limited youth um, recreation run through the school. It's not till um, kids are in seventh grade. Where is the funding? That's all paid for by parents? That's all paid for by parents. Yeah, I mean, it kind of gets organized through the school, but not paid by the school. Okay. That's they like that um, yeah not the only thing the school does is offer a place to sign up for registration, right, okay. but that's about it. It's all volunteer. All of the soccer, the basketball, the baseball. It's it's all volunteer. Okay. Any other questions from the board or comments about the recreation budget? All right. Thanks, Sarah. We'll move to general government. I'm on page one. Just to let you know, your um, budget doesn't reflect this, but we did get insurance premiums that went down. So that's gone down fairly substantially. I think it went down like thirty thousand dollars. Okay. That's good. Yeah, that, ne that never happened. Yeah. No, that never does happen, but it was good. Yeah, it went down thirty four thousand dollars. That's great. Any questions on this page one? In the uh, general government section there under town administration, just so yeah. everybody understands the change there is we kind of planned on worst case scenario. Um, currently, I don't take the town's insurance, but we kind of anticipated that somebody coming in would take a family plan. So that's the reason why you see that increase in there. Okay. Yeah. Dan, if there are a question on salaries, this budget's not reflecting you because you're going to be gone. That's correct. Right? That's correct. We just kind of kept it level for, um, for, for, we, we didn't change anything because we didn't know what to change it to, Eric. So we just left it where it would be if I was staying. Right. Because you're, you're, you're going to be replaced by somebody that's going to get paid. Right. Unfortunately, right? Mm. Unless you decide to stay, Dan. 
Nice try, Bob. I'm going to keep trying. Well, I, I don't mind you for trying. Uh, I'm counting down the day if you're trying to do this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, exactly. All right, any more questions on general government worksheet number one? Number two. Hey, Brian, it's under animal control. There's uh, what is that? Other twenty dollars. Hey, just wondered yeah. why. Uh, you mean taking a twenty dollar cut and bag? Yeah. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> well, just looking at the fourteen fifty nine, and then uh, budgeted is five hundred or 1500 I guess so it goes back 1500 yeah. yeah okay so that 1490 59 that's yeah. NL and me together right okay right Dan yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. he says yes okay well, I can see you're not going to get rich on that, Brian. He has been. He's ready to retire any day. That's after 40 years, Judy. <laughs> yeah. He's got a huge 401k from doing that job. Well, that's what I told Buckwheat there, that I got paid well. Yeah. <laughs> he probably wants a job, doesn't he? Any questions on page two, general government? Go to page three. I'm kind of browsing through these for the third time, but if you guys see anything that sticks out. I didn't earmark any questions, so it all looks pretty flat. Any questions on page three? We'll go to page four. Doesn't look like we're expecting anyone to get married. Maybe not. At least not here. Uh, we moved it um, per how the auditor wanted us to record stuff. It's really, um, I think, a liability now instead of a, an expense. The expense is just what we collect for the state and it passes through us. So it's just moved to a different spot. Okay. Thank you. All right, I'm on page four. Questions or comments on page four? That's pretty level. Go to page five. Questions on page five. The uh, cemetery software is that the initial purchasing fee, or is that going to be an annual maintenance fee? An annual fee. It is. All right, page six. I don't see any big changes here. The uh, recreation software. Yeah. That was moved. It's another case of it's been in there. We've just moved it from the rec budget to um, where we have the line items of all the software programs. 
so that they're all in one place for the budget because I use it more as a treasurer that it is used for recreational purpose, but um, it's, it's more than just rec. Okay, I just see it was zero. Yep, thank you. That was on page five, now page six. So any questions on six? Page seven. I mean, it's kind of like, this is all pretty flat. Seems like some of our biggest change is gonna be like leasing a new building for, for highway, uh, the tanker for fire department, things like that. Those are the big tickets, but well, it's not. Right, but it's it's all pretty flat besides those things. You know, Dan, you any, any comments about the overall budget? Uh, Cause I was really thinking about, <laughs> about the uh the lease you know that's another 80 to a hundred thousand dollars that we have to find every year and you know we've got a good hopefully a good plan going forward purchasing purchasing that property but um what else is out there that we got to worry about um you know i i think in the the long run the, in this year's budget you know there's really not a lot of fluff you're right i think everybody can see it the budget went out um, but I, you know, you look at the highway department. I think we figured the highway department hadn't added any personnel for 23 years. Is that right, Tina? Something like that. And in the meantime, in the meantime, you've added on a bunch of roads. You've added a bunch of sidewalks. Um, you know that it's it's just getting harder for them to to do the maintenance on time with that stuff. Um, the lease is a big driver in that cost. But I, you know, um, hopefully soon um, we should be closing on Sunny's property here. Um, well, we try to get it done before the end of the year. I'm not sure that that's going to happen right now. Um, but you see in tonight's warrants, we we gave him the, the $75,000 that we promised him in this calendar year for tax purposes. So we should be closing on that at least right after the first of the year. So I, I think infrastructure wise, you're, you're set up for the long haul for a long period of time. Um, equipment wise, you know, especially on the highway side, we've started going with the longer extended warranties. So I think you're not seeing it right away, but I think you're going to see some of your maintenance money and your maintenance costs go down if we can if we can keep that type of cycle where the, the equipment is gone before they or at least shortly after the warranty. So um, yeah, it's a pretty stable budget. I mean, me and Tina are looking at some stuff um, that we feel like we're going to be able to come back to you and and, and say, hey, you know, this can wait maybe another year. Um, but there's there's just not a lot in this year's budget. Um, that we hadn't planned on trying to do in last year. I, it may be, <clears throat> it's just all there. I mean, getting out of the village garage um, and, and getting someplace that's, that's, you know, those guys have a good place to work with something that they needed for a long time. And uh, that opportunity just kept kind of walked through the door for us. Right. Any questions for Dan on the follow up to all this? We can keep going on the general government. I'm on last page for well, page eight, actually. It's not last page. I didn't see anything on there. Yeah, I didn't see anything there page nine. I didn't pick out anything that I thought was shouldn't be there. Questions on page nine? You have a mowing expenses for Morristown cemeteries. Now, we're proposing to budget at the same level we did two years ago. Right. We have some issues with our town cemeteries and the mowing this past year with every other week or some scheduling. And Dan, maybe you can speak to that. I seem to remember some controversy over the cemeteries and the mowing and are we- Yeah, right, I mean, you know, 
Yeah, um, you're, you're correct. There was some controversy over whether it was getting mowed enough um, uh, or if you wanted to increase that budget for, for mowing or not. Um, right now, the way it's budgeted, it really can only be done budget-wise for every other week. Um, there's kind of a give and a take with that a little bit. Uh, the first part of the year, it probably needs it more. The end part of the year, when it dries out August, September, probably doesn't need it quite as much. Right. So there's a little bit of give and take with that. Depends how much it rains, too. Sometimes it's dry and you don't have to mow for a long time. But... Yeah. Any other questions on nine? No, we'll go to 10. The line with the Memorial Town planning. I actually have taken that out because I included it under the select board dues. Okay. Because that's really where it goes. So it's included twice in the budget. So that's going to be reduced by that. Okay. But that's, okay. It's one or the other, not both. That's right. You don't need to do it twice. Yeah. We move to page 11. Any other questions? What's in the green sheets here, Tina? Oh, that's your wages and your benefit information. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's basically what you are. What we already looked at. Yeah. So we don't need to rehash that. Any other questions for general government? All right. Well, I was hoping, Dan, that uh, I know you guys, you and Tina and Paula work together and figuring out uh, what we can uh, push off a year without having it be really bad. I know the the um, it was a pretty good increase that you guys first had given us. And as you know, we like to keep it, I like to keep it around five, and I know that's not always possible. I like to have it be under 5% increase, but uh, sometimes you can and you can't. That's why I brought up the lease at a fair, fair field building and some of the other things, but I'm hoping we can find ways to trim some of the not so necessary necessities. Well, thank you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we'll, we'll give you a list, you know, on, um, in just some recommendations like I, I think I talked to Tina the other day like summer recreation program since we didn't run it last summer we didn't spend any of the money from it last summer either um, so there are some things like that where we can probably trim a little bit um, so there, there's some things I think we can find to trim it down okay hopefully well let's move to EMS staffing for part-time positions Go ahead, Bill. Move up or speak loud. You can speak loud. I know that. So, uh, so historically here, uh, when we made our budget presentation uh, last month, we discussed uh, the need for adding part-time positions. Uh, we had originally come in with our uh, with our budget request, looking for a full-time and a part-time position in the next budget year. Uh, we were told that there were going to be some other personnel priorities that we could take precedent on that, so we came back with a request for two part time. Um, in meeting with Dan and Tina and looking at the numbers, uh, when we came last year and added the fifth part time position, uh, uh, we were trying to build a firewall against a uh, rampant overtime at that point. Right. Uh, that position reduced our overtime by 60%. Uh, overtime is now manageable. Uh, the trade off on that, however, uh, was that uh, our part time staff is limited by contract to 23 hours a week, 46 hours a pay period. Um, and, and when you look in your packet, you'll see some of the calendar stuff in there uh, where routinely, we're making a decision about covering open shifts uh, 
and we've included in there the, the way we do it. We offer it to volunteers first, then we offer it to, we try to move part-timers around if we can, but they've got other job responsibilities. Uh, uh, we offer it to part-time staff at straight time greater than their 23 hours. Uh, then we offer, offer it to part-time staff at overtime because their rate is lower. And then finally, we fill that shift when we have to at full-time overtime, meaning either me, Corey, or Diana. Uh, so you're trying to juggle it in an efficient way to cost. Yeah, try, try, try to fill, try to fill it with the most applicable level of certification, preferably an ALS level. At the least cost. Uh, at the least cost. Uh, as I alluded to earlier in the previous discussion this evening, uh, our volunteer staff does, does yeoman's work. They are, uh, we are 100% volunteer staff Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday nights, uh, and we have a volunteer split crew Friday and Saturday nights, pairing them with a paid member. 100% uh, of our second call coverage comes from our volunteer staff. When we have a second call during the day, when we have a critical patient that we're running direct to UVM, it's our volunteer staff that comes in and covers our station and, uh, and, and answers second call. Uh, I, I don't have the historical perspective that many of that you guys have on what staffing was like here. Uh, uh, but uh, the other thing that we talked about was by staffing and keeping our ambulance staffed, we have this revenue increase uh, that we talked about when we did our budget presentation. So, uh, we were budgeted to have billing at 171000 our actual budgeting was 201,000. That's what we brought in. Uh, how, how, how do we make that happen? We make that happen by keeping the ambulance staff. Uh, we don't have to go to mutual aid, really? therefore, a call it. No, we, we, can't, we can't bill for it because we were there. Uh, I think two things that sometimes get lost in the mix here uh, that uh, EMS budgeting is, is always a bit of a bit of a juggle. Uh, we've got to look at the cost of readiness and the cost of response. The cost of readiness are my static expenses, personnel, equipment, vehicles, fuel in those vehicles, electricity in the station, uh, uh, education uh, and recertification for our staff. Those are fixed cost of readiness uh, that has to happen for us to be available under a call. Our cost of response is what we get back on the revenue side. Uh, not, sometimes not as much as we want, uh, but we do get that back through insurance billing. And Corey and Tina, again, using that word yeoman, they do yeoman's work in getting that billing out in a prompt fashion so we get our reimbursements in a, in a, in a, in a timely fashion. So where is this all going? Where this is all going now is that um, we've, We've slayed the overtime break over the last year. We've reduced that significantly. Uh, what we're seeing, what we're the pattern we're seeing now, and the pattern we were alluding to when we were requesting additional staff, is that our current part-time staff goes over those 23 hours routinely sometimes because of filling holes in the schedule. If we go back to July, I mean. There was vacation for uh, There was, uh, I had two weeks off in August for baby delivery. Uh, uh, Diana had scheduled vacation time. Uh, that has to get covered. And, and uh, uh, if, it, if it doesn't get covered at the volunteer level, it's got to get covered at the paid level. Uh, I'm happy that we don't use mutual aid to cover our coverage area. We, are, we use mutual aid for what it's intended for. Right. Second calls in our area, third calls in our area, or when we need help on a scene. Uh, that, that's when we're using mutual aid now. Uh, adding to the mix here is that in the last month and a half, two months, I've had three volunteers request labor of absence. Uh, one is indefinite. Uh, one will be through possibly the end of February and one will probably be through the end of January. So those are three volunteers who are, who are scheduled volunteers who routinely pick up shifts on our schedule that are no longer available to me uh, 
long term, uh, one long term, and two at least through January and February. Uh, so this is what we're up against. This is the, the numbers you're seeing there. Uh, Tina uh, gave you guys numbers this afternoon. Uh, yeah, I saw that. The, the Tina Hill Center uh, that showed how how many times our part-time staff is going over contract right. hours to cover shifts. Uh, uh, it, it's not something we take lightly, much like the way we addressed the overtime. It wasn't something we were taking lightly. Uh, we don't take this lightly. Uh, you know. Uh, with them for 23 hours a week, 46 hours a week. Uh, the other side of that is we've got to, we've got to provide an emergency service 24/7, preferably at an, at an advanced life support level to a large coverage area. Uh, so uh, uh, taking that all in total, uh, we're spending the money right now uh, in these hours. Uh, so if we wanted to add a part-time position now, with maybe an eye to add in the second one in July, but I, I, I'm, I'm not fixed on that at the moment. Uh, but adding a position now to address this situation, to try to get our part-timers back to where they need to be. Well, it sounds um, like the, hiring another part-time now is still going to be hours that you're gonna, we're going to pay for anyway. Doesn't matter if it's you are who's being paid the hours, yes, right? And, and what you said, like Corey had vacation time, you had some time off, Diana did too. Those are things we need to count on anyway. We've got to build in the and labor. Well, the financial difference if you add a sixth person, right. you're not going to be paying right. more than already. Right. And, and exactly. And, we'll, and, and that goes that goes back to kind of what I was alluding to when we did our our budget presentation. Is that we had addressed the major problems. Now we needed to think strategically, uh, and strategically with adding positions in the next budget year. But when we run the numbers, uh, when Tina looks at the numbers, and uh, her and Dana and I have sat down and discussed this over the last couple of weeks, uh, uh, the numbers are now math is math, mm -hmm. um, and uh, the numbers are what they are now. Are you um, are you doing the juggling now of Trying to keep those part timers under 26 uh, hours. Absolutely. absolutely. It's, um, that's yeah, great. Because, um, if, if, um, if we had an open shift tomorrow, I would try to move somebody from Wednesday to Tuesday. Right. Give them Wednesday off and then work and then find coverage for Wednesday. Right. You know, um, well, we appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, uh, and again, trying to try not to do it with full time overtime because that, that's the expense of whack. We'll do it when we need to. Yeah. If it's if, it, if it's a choice between coverage and overtime, well, we're we're going we're doing it for coverage. Do you have somebody right now that you could hire part time? Uh, this has all come up kind of fast, but you know I've I've, I've got some some names in mind that I can reach out to. Because it sounds uh, like you need to hire somebody now. You know, um, if you're talking yeah. for January, you February. Want, you want to address some of that? Um, no, I guess just to agree with what Bill, you know, I put together this spreadsheet that takes everything from July 1st to the last payroll we just barely did. So we've got six months worth of data. Basically, our part-timers have worked 453 hours over what they're contracted to work in those six months. Wow. If you had a, another part-timer working the contracted hours for those payrolls, you really they would work 598 hours, so you really would be on the better end of it by 145 hours. Right. So, and it won't cost the town any more money, but it helps to bring up the compliance to the contract that you have with these people. And, and over time, all that. That's right. Yeah, I'm in total agreement with hiring a part timer now. Uh, Dan, Dan, any thoughts that you want to? I just want to everybody understand, you know, we, we cannot consistently take our part time employees that we have down there and, and have them work more than 23 hours a week. That's really going to drive our labor cost up because then we're going to be responsible for a lot more labor costs. If we continue to do that. So, um, quite honestly, we're spending the money one way or the other. Now, if we continue to do it like this, it's going to get a lot more expensive. So it, it's really there's not a lot of choice on this, unfortunately. Um, we're, we're spending the money, 
Um, if we continue to spend it, then we're going to end up spending a lot more. So I, I agree with Bill on this one. Sounds good. Do we want to entertain a motion? Uh, rates company. Oh, rate of pay. Tina probably has one already figured oh, out. I, I don't have rate of pay. I think that usually depends it, on. It, it, on it depends, on the, depends on the level of service. Level, but if yeah. you wanted to vote to hire a six part time EMS staff person, and then we can come back and they'll have somebody in That's line. That's a rate of certification or whatever. Wherever they're more at. Information then, but just to vote to hire one. Yeah, we're going to have to come back to you once we, we pick somebody up. Right. So we don't make a motion tonight? Yeah, you do. Um, I, you do? I think you should make a motion to approve a new, um, another part-time position not to exceed 23 hours per week. So moved. Be ready to be determined. Second. <laughs> I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Bill and Judy? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed. Yeah, that makes sense. Thanks, Bill. And thank you for juggling. You're you're more than just a uh, department head. You're also a juggler. <laughs> I knew you had to be because I saw that, that paperwork and I'm like, there's got to be somebody doing this all the time. And that's a job in itself. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it, it is what we do. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, and just an update, we've got uh, a little less than half of our staff currently COVID vaccinated in Southwest. Wow. And uh, 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 hopefully the, the remaining ones uh, tomorrow and Wednesday Great. Uh, will get those. Uh, EMS, people were rolled, uh, EMS people were rolled into 1A, uh, so we were the highest level. Uh, so uh, uh, Copley's been really good about getting our people uh, on an equivalency with their staff and our people have been going in and getting, getting uh, uh, inoculated. So uh, had, a, had uh, several of them on Friday and hopefully the rest of them over the next couple of days and in three weeks we'll do it again. Sounds good. That's great. All right. Um, next, liquor control. Sarah, do we have any liquor control tonight? I'm guessing not. No. Thank you. Approve the warrants. Make a motion to approve the warrants. Second. A and a second by Judy. All in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> motion is passed. No one said nay, it's all aye. All right, TA report, Dan. It just one thing I'd really like to talk about, and it really it goes back to the budget and town meeting uh, in particular. Um, I think Eric and Gary sat in on the webinar with us last week with some of the town staff about the Australian ballot and the process that we're going to have to go through to get that out. And I, I think realistically, um, the next select board meeting, I think, is January 4th, which is the Monday right after we're really going to have to to come up and, and be able to finalize the budget at that meeting or at least pretty close to it just because of the process that poor Sarah is going to have to go through you know we need to get the warning signed and out as early as we can so Sarah can get the ballot um, and get it back as soon as we can so there's not going to be a lot of time in January so I, I'm going to ask the board you know me and Tina will look at some stuff me Tina and Paula of course um, to look at some stuff in the budget but the board's got any thoughts, we're gonna need you to bring those thoughts back to us at that meeting so that we're ready to go um, with the budget and get it back to you and get approved so that we can get the warning done. It's gonna change a lot of things this year. Um, you know, Sarah's gonna have a, a lot of work to do to get that out and she has to have the warning approved and signed um, before she can get that ballot work done. And she's gotta get back, she's gotta get absentee ballots out. She's got a lot of stuff to do to get that moving. Um, Sarah, do you want to chime in on any of that? Uh, not really per se, just along with um, the training. So we, I, I went to the, a bunch of us staff went to that training too. And then Friday morning, I had another powwow with a lot of the town clerks because so many towns are moving to this. Um, 
I just wanted to um, get the word out. We really need to let um, people know that it's not only the budget and the warning and you guys, but anybody that's rerunning for any position has to, like the constables and the library trustees, they're all going to have to fill out the form, the consent of candidate form that usually only the select board and the school board members have to fill out. All the petition for candidates have been waived this year. So, so you, they don't need a petition. They just need to fill out that form that says, yes, they're running and their full name, how they want it to be on the ballot. And I don't have the calendar in front of me, but those are due around the 25th of January. So it's, I really need to help spread the word to candidates also along with um so i don't have to get signatures there yeah i don't know i don't know who's up for running but i am i know i am it, it's just going to be a lot of work it's going to be different and we we just need to be ready to move so we can get everything finalized and, and the warnings all going to be different the ballot's going to be look, looking completely different this year i, I I think Sarah and I are, and Tina are we're pretty confident we, we can get through this. It's just going to be a lot different than it has in, in previous years. So we need to make sure that we, we're ready to finalize things for the budget right after the first of the year. Dan, would there be any benefit to meeting next Monday night? No, I don't think so, because I don't think Tina and I will be ready to help you too much by then. I think if anything, we can schedule another meeting right after the first year if we need to, Eric. Okay. Okay. The other thing to be prepared for is um, I'm I need to schedule a BCA meeting either the first the very beginning of January too. Right now, the location of the polling place reverts back to the municipal building, but the BCA is going to have to vote if they want to keep it at the municipal building or move it back uh, to the VFW or another location. So we're going to have to have a a meeting to set the polling place location early January. I've been working close with the school too. Um, Tracy Rand and the uh, school district town clerks and I have been kind of chatting to figure out dates um, because it's not just the town ballots. It's the school voted to go absentee for everything also. So it'll be school ballots. So there's a lot of coordination. There's a lot of moving pieces. Okay. All right. Is that it, Dan? For your That's it. Everybody have a good Merry Christmas, please. Yeah, you do. Any questions for Dan? All right. Thanks, Dan. Next, uh, select board concerns. How about Judy? I'm going to have to ask someone to refresh my memory about the island that we we gave back to LCPC. What were we doing with that? Were we going to go to, to the abatement board, Sarah? Are you talking about the Canfield Brook piece of property? I think that's it. It it came before abatement. We haven't yeah. made we haven't made a decision on it yet. I I was going to bring it up at some point. Actually, uh, had a had a message from Caleb um, to talk to him about that property. Yeah, I, I thought I thought we were going to ask the conservation commission if they were going to take it. Yeah, well, we this goes back to when Chris Town was on the board with me, and we had met a couple of times to talk about it with LCPC, and um, we hadn't made a decision as a board, but both Chris and I felt like it was probably good for the town to own it. I know it doesn't have a lot of value; it's kind of like the piece of property that Rowles have, but. Um, kind of goes a long way to um, a relationship with LCPC and we've had that exact discussion with, with them. And um, and for that benefit, I know Chris and I felt that it was it was okay. It's you know, I think Ron Ron voiced his opinion. I think they felt that it it um, wasn't something they necessarily wanted to own or wanted to take over, but I'm not sure exactly why. I mean, it's, to me, like I said, it's a lot like this piece of property on Washington Highway. Um, but we certainly could reach out to Ron. I, I'm glad you brought that up because it was something in the back of my head, too, that I wanted to have all of us talk about. 
Um, I know Chris really wanted to. That's one thing that he was um, trying to get done before he left, before he got, got off the board. But um, I can I can reach out to Caleb and Matthew. That you're back from Ron um, about a couple of other things too, so I can circle back around about that and uh, let everybody know what's going on where we are. Okay, that's all I have. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Judy. How about you, Brian? I'm all set. All right. How about you, Gary? Well, I just had somebody mention to me about. Uh, I wonder if it'd be possible to get some crosswalk signs on Harold Street where the sidewalk crossed. Uh, I brought it up early this year, and there's still no signs there. Not looking at for the illuminated one, just a typical. I talked to Kevin about that before, and you're right. It's something that we need to get done. Okay, you'll talk to Kevin again. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Eric. Uh, I just. Like in uh, watching the weatherman. So Christmas Eve and Christmas Day are not looking great for our highway departments to spend time with their families. Uh, so just uh, keeping them in our thoughts, as well as our emergency services folks. If the weather does not sound great, we hope it's a nice calm night. But, uh, we have probably lots of our highway departments that's out there making sure the roads are passable for us to get them. See our other families or wherever we're headed this year. Yeah, appreciate that. Sounds good. And I'm all set tonight. I don't have anything. Um, do we have any other business? Motion to adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn. Is there a second, Judy? Second. <laughs> all in favor say aye. Uh, aye. <laughs> aye. Uh, motion is passed. Thank you for joining us. Thanks to everybody else. Merry Christmas, New Year. Thank you. Have a good night.